Hello and welcome back. Uh, I've recently made a huge update to the toolkit, which changes a lot of things and adds quite a lot of new features. So I thought I'd make a video to show how to use some of these new features and how the toolkit is now organized. So, uh, one of the big new features has to do with the height maps and how uh, the toolkit handles height. Uh, now, if you recall from previous videos, you can place tiles in the level and it will generate height maps on these if you specify that it should. Uh, so, to show that again quickly, if I place a square tile like this and I release it from the grid so I can put it a bit higher up like this, if we don't do anything else, the toolkit will just ignore it and you can walk straight through it and you can place tiles like this. Um, but if we go into the grid manager and we go to height map, um, now it's set to false as you can see, or we can choose from tiles. Now this means that it finds all actors that are parented to uh, the tile parent uh, blueprint, which includes all of these tiles here. And it will look at all of those and uh, find their heights and update the grid accordingly. So now if we press play you can walk on top of this um, this tile. So that's like it used to be. Uh, now this has been improved slightly. Uh, so you can rotate these tiles um, and the mesh uh, or the blue markers will conform uh, to the the angle of the underlying uh, tile actor, so that's new. Um, but a bigger new feature is that you can place meshes in your le level, and uh, the toolkit will automatically also find and include these. Uh, so now I'm placing. Uh, this is actually just a mesh, so this is not a tile. This is from the meshes folder. Uh, so if we use the uh, from tiles height map, this will be ignored as you can see if I press play. So it doesn't count as a tile. But if I instead choose a height map from tracing, then it will be included as you can see, even though this is just a regular static mesh. And uh, now this works by at the start of uh, when you press play, uh, the toolkit does trace down on the center of each and every tile. And if it finds anything, uh, any mesh above that blocks, um, let's see, that blocks path trace as all um, uh, collisions do by default, then it will uh, use the position that's hit by the trace and use that to update the height map. Uh, so now that's added as well. Um, and this should also work with rotation. Yeah, it does. Uh, so that's one thing. You can, so you can just place meshes now. You don't have to use the old method like placing tons of invisible uh, tile actors on top of stuff to get it to work. Um, and another cool thing you can do with traces is that you can actually do this with terrain. Uh, so to show this off, I'm going to make a landscape. So let's see. Uh, so I make a small landscape like this with just the green material and I create one like this and I'll place it uh, just for ease of use at the same position as um, as the grid here. Let's see, zero, oh it's at a hundred and uh, since these are centered I have to change this a bit, let's see there and it's a bit bigger. Let's see. Um, if we go to the grid manager and just make it fit, let's see, 28. There. Uh, so now if I change this landscape a bit and just make it randomly a bit taller like this. And then with the grid manager, I think I'll uh, hide the default tile. And yeah, a new thing. If you move pawns around, it will be placed on top of the terrain that you've placed. Uh, and now 
if we click play, you can see that he can walk on top of the terrain. Uh, but as you can see, <laughs> this doesn't look very well. Uh, so I've added another thing. I've added the possibility of using decals instead of static meshes for showing the tiles that you can walk to. Uh, so let's change that. So if we go back to the grid manager and we look down here at decals, uh, and you can check use decals. Then uh, the toolkit will use all of these decals uh, for hover markers, current markers, tiles and move range, tiles and sight range, all of that instead of these static meshes. So decals automatically conform to any underlying landscape like this. Uh, so now it looks a whole lot better. Uh, and decals also work if you have things like stairs or uh, uneven tiles, stuff like that, that doesn't work with a regular like rotated uh, static mesh. So that's one of the bigger new features. Um, oh, and another thing with height maps, let's see. Um, is like before you can choose uh, to have an auto cost uh, on edges based on height. Uh, so you can say that if it's too big a difference between um, two tiles then you can't walk between them. Uh, now if you're using tracing this would mean there's too big a difference between the center of each of the tiles. So let's just make sure this is big enough for this to work. So a mountain like this and as you can see, yeah, he can't walk up here, it's too steep, but here it's a bit more, a bit less steep, so we can walk there. Um, so that's like before, uh, though now it is also possible, let's see, in the grid manager, uh, to change the slow increment, so that's, th this is at what increments does the cost um, of an edge increased by one. So impassable cutoff, that's the cutoff when it's impossible to move between two tiles. Slow increment, if it's put to 50, that means that if the height difference between two tiles is uh, higher than 50, it will be one slower, that means two. If it's 100, it would be two slower, that means three. But since the impassable cutoff is 100, then it would be impassable instead. Uh, so this is perhaps a bit harder to see uh, but this affects movement, of course, so that's another new feature. Uh, oh yeah, and the thing to note, if you're using tracing, then you have these um, max grid height and minimum grid height that you can change. So this is uh, the height at which uh, the trace starts when looking down for any tiles to hit. So if you have terrain that's above uh, the max grid height, they won't be uh, included. So we include this to be uh, as high up as the highest walkable point you want in your level, and the lowest uh, for this. This is relative uh, to the grid manager. Some other new features are changes to um, movement pathfinding and uh, some stuff like that, which is now um, to a greater degree, degree contained within the pawns. Now one of the big things is a large reorganization, by the way, of the entire blueprint, which uh, has changed everything from being contained at the grid manager to moving things around to uh, player controller, game mode, uh, AI controller, stuff like that, to make it more modular and easier for people to modify. Um, but I'll go into that in a later video. Um, in more detail, but one of the things is that now inside the pawns you can change a lot more uh, things that you uh, would before change in the grid manager. So, uh, as you can see here, uh, you can change uh, diagonal movement, cross corners, um, these things inside the pawn. So you can have some pawns that can walk diagonally, others who can't, uh, for instance. Um, if you want that kind of thing. So it's a bit more flexible in that regard and the same thing with crossing corners. Uh, can split up move, that's a new thing. But let's pawn split up their move. Um, so you can walk one tile and then a couple of two more and things like that. So this can be changed quite easily into like an action point system um, like you would see in the old Fallout games or similar. 
Um, another new thing is that actually visibility and pathfinding is calculated simultaneously. So if I place an enemy here, and I increase my range so I can see him. Um, you can see now that you can fire at him automatically. You don't have to click yourself or stop or something like that for you to see him. And uh, the visibility around you only shows up when you're out of movement. If you're using, um, if you're if you're able to split up movement, yeah. So that's that. Um, you can also change visibility so that you can have um, visibility that's not in a square but like in a diamond shape, like you would in quite a few games. Uh, that can be changed inside the player controller. Uh, now I'm not going to delve too much into the blueprints in this video, but uh, just to show this off, in the begin unit turn part, uh, in the find tiles in range function, you can change this to diamond shaped. And then, see, needs to compile. So yeah, now it's a bit big, but you can see that it's in a diamond shape, or it would be if it wasn't blocked by all the hills. So that's the thing, and you can also change uh, the speed uh, that the pawn moves individually on each pawn. So let's make this really high. Um, and the acceleration too. And... Starting slow all of a sudden, Let's see, and yeah, really fast. Like that's and a lot of other things that can be changed too, uh, but uh, that has to do with animation. And I will show how to add pawns with custom skeleton soon. Uh, so that's a big new thing. And while I'm at speaking about changes that can be made in the player controller, might as well show one more. So here in the begin unit turn, also stuff you can change pathfinding so that pathfinding will continue beyond the movement range of a pawn. Now, why would you do this? Well, maybe to show uh, where a pawn can move the next turn, like in Civilization, for instance, or uh, there are other uses. The artificial intelligence has used this also in the previous build to keep calculating pathfinding until it finds an enemy to move towards. Um, but yeah, let's connect this up. You can make this anything you want, but like this, it will display the same movement range um, after it just displayed the regular movement. So, if we press play, we should be able to see where uh, this pawn can walk uh, on this next turn. So we can see that. So we should be able to walk here the next. And you can click outside here, and it will he will move to the closest one. Oh, he's fast. Um, and yeah, you can move over here. So this can be used for, like I said, things like civilization, where you can show uh, where the pawn can move over multiple turns, uh, or maybe, um, and it can be used like a base for things like in XCOM, where you want to show some tiles that you can run to, others that you can move to. Um, you can build that kind of stuff on top of this functionality. Now, and I am going to add this sort of things more directly in the future, as I will be adding uh, example maps of those sorts of games. But um, for now, this is what you get. Um, so that's that. Uh, so there's, yeah, I guess there's one more big, like, obvious uh, feature that I've added. I'll just delete this stuff for that, and I'll show the default tile again. Um, and that's the option of displaying the grid as a texture instead of a mesh. Um, so, here you can see the default tile object. It's now instant static mesh. It can be set to static mesh, which is less efficient, but sometimes necessary. I think there's a limit to the number of instant static meshes on mobile, for instance. Or, and there's texture, which is a new one. Uh, you have to show the collision plane for that, because it uses the collision plane. And here you have um, a grid made up of textures, which is a good base for making a 2D game or something like that. And it's uh, yeah, more efficient than the regular grid, even though the instant static meshes are pretty efficient as well, really.
So yeah, so those are the most obvious, like visually uh, obvious big changes, though the biggest change by far is still the reorganization of the blueprint. Um, now the reason I haven't made a video that uh, shows how the blueprint is organized and how to modify it yet is because I knew that I was going to make such a big update changing almost everything. So now that that has been done, I will do, be doing that soon. Uh, but for now, that's what I'm going to, um, what I had to say in this video, so uh, bye bye.